my name is Nao Tsuchiya. Uh, I'm from uh, Monash University in Australia. And uh, I'm a primary a neuroscientist, a psychologist um, uh, who are interested in consciousness and its uh, physical or neural basis. And today I want to talk about uh, this uh, particular theory called the integrated information theory of consciousness, which I think uh, Scott is going to talk and uh, try to crash tomorrow, I guess. Uh, I, my main motivation of this project is to uh, literally, uh, empirically try to test um, integrated information uh, theory using the real neuronal data. So but briefly, uh, what this uh, theory, IIT, claims is uh, that uh, our conscious experience may be able to be explained by a set of uh, uh, mathematical formulas, but uh, that is uh, crucially derived from a uh, uh, sort of set of the essential property of consciousness. And uh, IIT identifies several uh, essential properties of consciousness, such as existence, information, integration, and composition, and the exclusion. And from this uh, set of the uh, properties, uh, it tries to derive some kind of mathematical formalism and then try to get to the uh, prediction about uh, consciousness. And then, uh, so my, my question here is this, uh, can IIT be empirically tested? This has been quite uh, intensely discussed uh, in the field because this uh, theory is apparently impossible to test or compute. And the uh, second thing, uh, which is also related to my other interest, is that uh, how can we uh, understand this IIT uh, and uh, its relation to other types of the measurements, such as our uh, theories and con uh, constructs. And uh, as Mire uh, today mentioned, um, I started working on a uh, Epsilon uh, machine that is from uh, computational mechanics, as well as uh, um, recently I'm trying to uh, combine or so compare how this uh, integrated information uh, relates to the notion of free energy principle and so on. And the, uh, Kavan, Modi, and the Felix uh, Pollock, and the Jakub Hohiz are a uh, crucial collaborator for this project. So uh, this is a uh, quite a dense figure, but it tries to explain uh, pretty much um, the summary of uh, this empirical uh, testing of the uh, IIT. The data comes from this uh, flies. It is a uh, fly, Drosophila flies, which is very small. You know, you can probably see from there, uh, roughly one mi uh, millimeter. And they uh, have a um, number of neurons, uh, which is roughly uh, 100,000 of uh, uh, neurons inside the brain, although it's really small. It's highly complicatedly uh, organized. And uh, you, might be, you might not believe it, but uh, flies can get anesthetized as in uh, humans using exactly the same kind of the drugs called the isoflurane. And they sleep and they learn similarly to you know, humans. And there are many, many different you know, differences at large and scale, but at the level of the, uh, my, for my purpose, uh, of uh, distinguishing between awareness or awakeful flies versus anesthetized flies, which presumably is not feeling uh, in terms of pain or something like that. Uh, it's uh, more or less sort of the ho homologous between human and uh, flies. But uh, that's an assumption I'm making. And then from uh, uh, my collaborator can actually uh, insert electrodes into the fly brain. And then there are, uh, in this case, it is a 16 channel uh, electrodes. And then uh, they can record a very high quality signal from all over the brain at once. Uh, it's like, you know, for me, inserting the brain, uh, inserting electrodes like this size, but uh, they can survive and then they can, you know, remain awakeful. And then uh, each of the time point uh, records some kind of voltage fluctuation. And then here, uh, what I'm showing is this a trace, a voltage trace of the two channels uh, recorded from the inside the brain of the fly. And then to try to uh, uh, get the integrated information, what we do is first uh, to digitize it into zero and one. And then from that, we compute this uh, so-called transition probability matrix. And then uh, from that, we comp uh, compare between the actuary of the transition probability matrix with the fictitiously uh, cut or independent version of the transition probability matrix. And then as a result, what you get is, uh, this is a two-channel version of the integrated information, and then uh, amount of the integrated information can be considered as a sort of the contribution of each part, as well as a combination of parts make to the whole. And then eventually, 
uh, you get this kind of shape. And then what we found was uh, we can discriminate awake fruit versus anesthetized flies using this measure. So uh, that's it. <laughs>